Wedge City. So in this world, is Kansas City just named Center City? So the pipe falls because the chain comes loose from the right side of the pipe. Uh, then, when the same end of the pipe hits the chest, there's clearly a chain wrapped around it. I suppose the camera could have switched angles, and we are actually seeing the opposite side of the pipe, but either way, it's clear that this movie suffers from multiple issues in the area of handling, laying, and filming its pipe. So long ago, someone recognized the dangerous power of this mask and locked it in a chest underwater? That's a few steps short of parallaxing it. And everyone knows parallaxing is some lazy sh**. I'd forgotten how much this film was playing into that whole swing revival thing that happened in the 90s. Sh**, I forgot swing revival was a thing that happened in the 90s. Now, the Royal Crown Review is a very talented band that deserves respect for their contributions to the world of music as a whole. But swing revival happened in the 90s, so... I got those... concert tickets you wanted. BTS? Wait, um... <clears throat> BTS. That was the most sickening display I've ever seen. I disagree. I think I'm wearing her down. This is sitcom level writing. Is this a discarded episode of Friends? I've seen better writing on soap operas. I mean, the delivery isn't helping matters, but it's still the writing's fault. You need a little change of pace. If I had a nickel for every time change of pace was the inciting incident in a mediocre comedy, I'd have thousands of nickels. I love how handsome Jim Carrey in a nice suit with a good job is somehow a loser with women. Tonight, I'm gonna take you on a love safari, deep into the darkest heart of the urban jungle. The Coco Bongo Club. A love safari at the Coco Bongo Club definitely sounds like a situation that would include a lap dance and not a swing dance. But alas, this movie only contains a swing dance and a rumbo, I think. Also, when we do finally see the Coco Bongo Club, it looks less like the darkest heart of the urban jungle and more like a strip mall in Reseda. Trust me, buddy. This is going to be the perfect night on the town. Say what you will about this movie, but don't say it takes its time. We're still rolling opening credits, and they've already established the main character's plight and planned an event that will no doubt kick the film's events into motion. That's efficient! One sin for efficiency! It's the big city. You are going to get soaked right now. Stop pretending a briefcase or a f***ing newspaper is doing any good keeping you dry, you numbnuts. Killer at 3 o'clock. You are looking directly in front of you. That's noon if I ever saw noon. What the f*** movie? How do you fuck this up? Stand back and observe. Now we've introduced the love interest and we're still in the opening credits. This movie wins the prize for not f***ing around. Sniffing a hot customer's jacket. Jim Carrey is so talented at physical comedy that it's downright sinful. This is the main floor of a major bank with dozens of people all around, and she's basically dry-humping this guy. Is recording this footage supposed to be helpful in some way? All this really does is provide the location of the vault. Sure, Freeze later claims to have gotten some details about motion detectors, but I doubt he got that from this grainy-ass footage. Either way, this seems hardly worth the possibility of getting caught with this comically large camera. And I know this was just the reality of technology back then, but technology back then was pretty damn comical. These guys get chided for being too loud, but they also have a goddamn and beer on the playing surface. You mess with Nico, you end up taking a dirt nap. You use dialogue cliches from the 40s, you end up taking a dirt nap with the fishes. Wait. <laughs> Having a door like this. <laughs> time period, does this movie want me to think I'm a f you? That's the time period. Everyone gets let into the club except our protagonist. This movie's playing the hits. I hereby officially propose we outlaw the use of the car drives by and splashes water snow on someone as a way to show that someone is even more downtrodden than you thought, cliche. Jailhouse dress. That's not my car. <laughs> but it matches the ticket. Funny moment where we can really feel for this guy's ego, but he never called for a car or gave anyone a ticket. He was thrown out on his ass, then got hit with this tire spray from Tina's car all right before this conversation started. Oh no, the shitty ass car the screenwriter saddled you with has broken down. Won't somebody think of the children? I'm just... Looking for my mask! My mask, the mask, same difference, in it. The cops shine a light and ask what he's doing in the water, and he says he's just looking for his mask, and end scene. Brilliant! Hey, you! You've been gone for nine hours. Milo desperately needs to pee, but please pick him up and squeeze him for your own amusement. You're saying that everybody wears a mask? Guy who just found a mask doubles on a talk show about people wearing masks. That's correct, Wendy. We all wear masks, metaphorically speaking. Well, damn, you got me thinking. There's been a lot of arguing about being pro-masks or anti-masks, but no one ever stopped to ask which mask. It's like one mask came barreling down the tracks and collided with the other one. It made us all assholes for a little while. I don't know if it matters that you're literally for masks, metaphorically against them, vice versa, inverted, samesies, or whatever. 
Now, I'd like to tell you I have the means to weave this around to an actual criticism of this movie, but I'm just angry that the summer of 1994 now feels like a simpler time when I could watch a Jim Carrey movie in the cool comfort of an air-conditioned movie theater without being angry at the boomer in front of me that doesn't know how to turn down the brightness on their phone. I don't know everything, but I do know that this is a terrible book cover design. Oh. I see. It's like Roger Rabbit without actually acknowledging the tunes. So we have five baddies in the background, the mask talking to a sixth, and don't forget about this guy who I presume is still perched atop that car for a full count of seven baddies. But when they get lured down this alleyway, there are now only six, meaning hardcore parkour must have broken his ankles with this over-the-top entrance of jumping down from Lord knows where. The moral of this story is that Assassin's Creed is a video game that has caused actual physical as well as emotional pain. Get right up here! Don't be shy! Is he able to just conjure sh out of thin air like Green Lantern? He's got a new costume, a sandwich board, and colored spotlights. It's like the genie from Aladdin came to life in the real world, but nobody ever explained his powers or limitations. Backwards baseball cap guy was definitely shirtless at the beginning of this chase, licking balloons. What's a dream? Conclusions not supported by evidence. This is... impossible. Those pajamas are impossible. This actually happened. Pajama shaming. Also, he was clearly being colloquial. Also, also, those pajamas are 100% fine. You expect me to believe this motherfucker has sage and allspice? <laughs> After Stanley throws it out the window, the mask returns to his apartment as if to suggest some sort of attachment to the character. But later, Dorian and Milo are able to use it just as easily as Stanley. If anyone can use it, why is it so keen to be in Stanley's life right now? I'm with the Evening Star. Can you tell me what happened here? Peggy says she is with the Evening Star when her badge says Edge City Tribune. Can you tell us something? sigh! These are the same. 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 This one is unique. This one is unique and relevant to the story, but at this point, why? A white blouse, a green jacket. Did he just call that a green jacket? You don't own an 89 Civic? Did she steal that at the crime scene she snuck into? That seems like a breach of journalistic ethics. <laughs> I'm sorry. I couldn't get through that. <laughs> journalistic ethics. <laughs> Do you know how hard it is to find a decent man in this town? Most of them think monogamy is some kind of wood. More accurately, I'd say they don't associate monogamy with wood. Why are you covering this story? Because dear Peggy pays dick. What? You just said you got hundreds of letters last year from a single column you wrote. It's the beat journalists you're attempting to imitate here who get paid dick. Dear Abby was raking it in, you fools. This dream sequence involves Stanley being confident, having a nice car, and almost kissing a woman. All things that should be 100% more likely to occur than 90% of the things that actually occur in this movie. You left a jar of peanut butter and an open sleeve of saltine crackers on your nightstand, but the dog was licking your ear. Wasting time. Service worth waiting for is a terrible slogan for a power company. And yes, this is a movie, so it might be a gag, but nope. This is the van the club-running crime guy is using for surveillance. So the criminals put an obvious fake slogan on their spy van, and that is worth a sit. Okay, you boys are on your own now. They're on their own now? What meaningful contributions were you planning on making over the phone, aside from asking them what's happening now every five minutes? <laughs> Cops show up to a robbery you did not commit, and you open fire? At most you face firearms charges and acting creepy outside of bank charges, but drop the gun and put your f***ing hands up, or at least run to the van and do a high-speed chase thing. I'm just saying he went from literally a tornado running around the city in the last scene to showing up in the world's longest limousine in this scene. So, is he God? Am I allowed to question anything he does? Is he omnipotent? Imagine being the guy who has to make sure all these staircase light bulbs are always working and lit. Okay, that dress has to be illegal. He says, let's rock this joint, then spins the drummer, who then has a different outfit on and is enthusiastic about playing the mask guy's song, and once again, is he God? So far, the mask's main attributes appear to be dancing and mugging for the camera. Instead of taking him to a hospital or a mob doctor, they bring Freeze back to the Coco Bongo Club so that he can die listening to swing music. A kiss made her shoes fly off her feet? Seriously, just make this a cartoon. What the f*** are we even doing here, people? <laughs> Matrix, eat your heart out. This protracted death goes on for some time, and it's not even worth it a little bit. Mike Myers called to remind us that this wasn't even funny when he did it in Wayne's World. So you got a warrant this time? Or you just stop by for a nightcap? Dorian is worried about warrants, as if him and his goons firing their guns wildly about the club wasn't enough cause for the police to show up. What I got is probable cause. A couple of your boys were spotted knocking over Red City Bank. Hey. Lieutenant Kellaway explains why he doesn't need a warrant, as if Dorian and his goons firing their guns wildly about the club wasn't enough cause for the police to show up. So he somehow got all this money back into this closet in five seconds' time without using the mask superpowers? You know, you weren't putting up much of a fight with that freak show last night when he tried to kiss you. Yeah, that was all her fault. And see if we can arrange a little vacation for you at Club Fat! That'll be all, Ipkiss. 
Telling off a boss and getting away with it like Liar Liar's boardroom scene? This whole movie is some kind of time-traveling story of Jim Carrey's future filmography. The oversized suits and the boardroom sh** from Liar Liar, the job at the bank from Yes Man, the sudden superpowers used for selfish reasons from Bruce Almighty, the split personality of me, myself, and Irene, it goes on and on. Two tickets to the charity ball at the Coco Bongo Club this Saturday night. Anybody who's anybody will be there. Considering the fairly recent incident at the Coco Bongo Club involving armed men and a police presence, I'm not sure why anybody would be trying to visit that place anytime soon. Also, all activity in this city seems centered around the bank, a car repair shop, and the Coco Bongo Club. I, um, wouldn't mind. I know him, you know. The power of boners causes Stanley to implicate himself in the robbery of the very bank he is currently standing in, while the police are likely within earshot of this conversation. Do you think you can have him meet me tonight? I might be able to work something out. How about it? Landfill Park. Landfill Park? Landfill Park? That's the name of an actual park? You put a park on top of a landfill and you couldn't be bothered to name it Petunia Park or Marigold Park? Christ! Possibly a representation of one of the Norse night gods. Maybe Loki. I'm glad you bring him up. I've been thinking to myself that if you remove all the silly cartoon style action and animation, the general mischievousness of the character is very entertaining. And actually more like what I was hoping to get from the Loki TV show. The sin here is allowing me a glimpse of the world I will never know. <laughs> Thing doesn't do the thing it usually does because someone is watching cliché. This guy doesn't believe Stanley's story about turning into the mask and suggests mental health treatment, but wasn't that event from last night with a green-faced dude doing magic and taking over the floor show? Wasn't that major news? Couldn't everyone know about and be talking about the mask? Doyle, get in the car. But I ordered onion rings. Doyle! Kellaway is addicted to Doyle and to onion rings. <laughs> he has his gun out? Kiss me, my dear. And I will reveal my croissant. I will spread your pate. I will dip my ladle in your vicious walls. As you can see, this film rests squarely in the middle of the subtle years of Jim Carrey's career. Also, I think it's fair to say this scene aged like Vin de Toilette. She is so coy. I love it. Pepe the Pew, come to life. I did it, you hear? And I'm glad. Glad, I tell ya! What are they gonna do to me, Sarge? It's like he saw Aladdin and thought, I'm that good at impressions and improv. And he probably is, today, but this is just mugging for the sake of mugging. It's not humorous. That's not how physics were- oh, who f***ing cares? Is that a Surf Ninjas poster? This police lady starts singing without the ability to control it, meaning the mask is doing it. So again, why is there any conflict in this movie whatsoever? The whole thing is just him being confronted with an apparent obstacle, doing a skip, then using superpowers to get out of the jam, repeat. Jesus. Start dancing, I'll blow your brains out. He can't help it, right? And why aren't you dancing? That thing. Lieutenant Kellaway launches tear gas into this crowd and no one sheds a tear. Stanley ends up being shot at because the mask runs into this alley and immediately changes back into Stanley instead of safely Tasmanian deviling himself across town. Unless it's Patton Oswalt ranting about Star Wars, a filibuster is usually not a good thing. But this headline seems to think that a Senate hearing without one ain't worth the cost of admission. Okay, she does work for the newspaper, but look, at no time is there a newspaper building that just stores stacks and stacks of yesterday's newspaper. They print them and they ship them out and leftovers are not a thing, certainly not this many. Maybe they have a recycling setup kind of deal, but why does being a reporter give her a key to this place? Most newspapers aren't even printed on the same grounds as the writers and editors' offices. Money better be here, Ipkiss. I'm confused. The bad guy was going to kill Ipkiss by having him dropped into the printing press. Then he asks about the mask and puts it on. Then he says the police are looking for the mask, so we'll give them the mask. And then we cut to his thugs robbing Ipkiss' house? Did you cut too many scenes here or what? There was no talk of robbing him at all. Maybe there was a scene where he begged for his life by offering them the money from the bank heist, but it got cut? I'm confused. Wait! I can explain everything! Oh yeah? Explain everything? Explain this! Kellaway is, for some reason, not a little concerned about the circumstances by which Stanley was literally dropped into his lap, tied up, and with all the necessary evidence in his pockets. He was a good enough cop to piece together Stanley's involvement, but he doesn't think there's more to this story. Police work! Also, Stanley answers with, um, instead of the truth, which is that Dorian tied him up, planted evidence on him, and threw him from a moving vehicle, which is actually pretty plausible at this point. He's going to the charity ball tonight. He's gonna do something terrible. Not the charity ball! Also, is this how it works? You catch the biggest criminal in town who was all over the news, lock him in a cell where there are apparently no other prisoners nearby, and then let him have a visitor right outside his cell alone? Police work! Not for nothing, but that no graffiti sign isn't going to stop anyone. And it's also uglier than graffiti would be. Also, this guy in jeans with a double bag, not his first time paying bail. She is at the police station, but walks down the street to try and avoid her boyfriend's henchmen. Stanley puts this piece of toilet paper on the front of the seat, instead of the back of the seat, which is clearly exposed. There's a woman being chased through the alleyway there. Come on, she needs help! Yeah, yeah, sure. Keep it down, Ipkiss. Police work! 
Ah, yes, a classic. The box of explosives labeled explosives. Ixne! Ihe sat gay and ungay. Ow! Highway, Izye, Ihe, Uzingwe, Igpe, Atnale, Ifye, Tanle, Say, Azwe, Actually, Oinge, Ute, Hutse, I'm He, Ohe, Udwe, Histe, Ibe, Henye, Ederbe, Hante, A, Ingse, Itwe, Ormelne? Or some shit like that. This guy checks, flashes his gun, because either he forgot he had a gun on him, or the movie forgot that we know this place has armed personnel hanging out pretty much all the time. I'm just an ex-employee who's come for his back pay, or should I say pay back? Slightly more evil, Dorian had time to work on his setups and wordplay. That is some Bugs Bunny looking shit right there. Don't you have respect for law and order? She's asking the guy who came in shooting and literally murdered a bunch of people 30 seconds ago. He decidedly does not have a sense of law and order. Just one last kiss. Dorian falls for this one last kiss bullshit. No! From the real Dorian. The one I used to love. Dorian falls for this from the real Dorian bullshit. Ang Lee saw this and still gave us Hulk dogs. I'm winning! Premature celebration. Jesus f***ing Christ. Officers! Arrest those men! I've always wanted to say that. Sure, but why are they listening to you? Stanley hasn't taken Milo on a walk this entire movie. They're throwing it in the river. This is the dumbest thing in this entire movie, and that is saying something. Like a cow's opinion. <laughs> it just doesn't matter. <laughs> it's moo. Baby, the pen is blue. The pen is blue! It's checking in CDs, savings checking in CDs. I don't want to sell anything, buy anything, or process anything as a career. The loner. The loner? The loner. <laughs> going down on a big scale. Ooh. He wants to talk to you. I think it's about all those loans you've been approving. Well, you got a nice run. I might get shit canned, Norm. Anyway, don't worry about it. 120 yards. That's gonna be a good one. How's it going, Freeze? I hate when people talk during the movie. That thing does not obey the laws of physics at all. Look, now you have to ask yourself one question. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? <laughs> 